This is Nina Curley reporting for WAMDA, and I'm here with Amr Shadi of TA Telecom, uh, one of the region's leading mobile value-added service providers based in Cairo. Amr, how are you? Good, Nina. How are you? Good. When did you start TA Telecom? How did you come up with the idea? Well, it was really kind of cascaded. What we started out with was actually the mobile advertising back in uh, 2000. We, it was actually before that, 1999, we were three friends, we were looking at, each of us was in a, a different industry, very slow-paced industries. I can't say we did like a, a, a study on the market size, etc. Back then, we're kind of young and we just had, uh, let's say, a hunch that uh, the use of mobile is going to increase. What we can do with SMS advertising can be very disruptive to um, other channels like uh, newspapers and magazines for some for some kind of uh, customers, especially the retailers. Uh, we started to get good results and traction from from uh, from that service. We we kind of grew very fast, relatively, in in that year, and we we kind of uh, so divine intervention. We met the marketing director of Vodafone, who's now back in back in 2001, who is now the CEO of Vodafone actually in Egypt. And he told us to, uh, he just kept on hearing our story and what we were doing, and he said, well, we support these kinds of uh, businesses and, and young folks like you, so why don't you come to our office and let's see how we can help. So that kind of opened the door for us to jump into something very different, which is really the the mobile vast area, and we did go to Mr. Um, Abdul's um, office in uh, back in 2001, and we pitched a vast service to Vodafone back then. And honestly, we we pitched the idea with that with we with little knowledge on how how we we're actually going to implement this idea. So, um, but we knew that if because some what we pitched was basically an SMS competition soccer-based SMS competition between the two arch rival uh, teams here in Egypt. And um, we, something similar like this was, was uh, the concept of SMS competitions was obviously um, implemented before in, in Europe. So we knew there was a way to, to, to do this. They liked the idea a lot, and we, they signed, we started to uh, launch the uh, service with them. We figured out technically how to do it. It was launched. It was very successful, and this was really... Uh, the cradle for us to move into the uh, vast space. We started to develop content platforms for different operators like Mobinil, and we started to develop and manage some of the content services for Vodafone, and then we started to expand uh, and develop, just keep on, we increased our competency in developing these platforms, to, and we started to expand geographically into uh, the UAE, and then from then onwards, it was uh, Nigeria, Afghanistan, Saudi Arabia, and um, this is when we started to focus more on on our bus platform. Uh, that was around 2006, 2007. So take me back to that meeting with the Vodafone CDO, CEO. Do you think that that was a tipping point in your success? Was this the first big client that you brought on board that opened doors for you? And what do you think, um, when you were in that meeting, how do you think you managed to convince him that you had what it, what it took? Well, we, well, first, in, in terms of tipping points, I think the company, our, our company at TA Telecom, we've been, since 2000, we've been growing the company uh, in terms of revenue 10 times every five years. And I do believe that we had a, a, a several pivotal points in our history uh, that really contributed to what, where we are today. Um, some of them were actually even failures. But um, I think one of the most important things that was very important for us uh, from the very beginning was our focus on uh, cash, on a, a profitable model, business model. I think this was actually very important uh, for us because it allowed us to really grow, grow the company uh, organically uh, as much as we could without really, I mean, we're not a VC. Today we're not a VC-backed uh, company. We're generating multi-millions of dollars, but we're not VC-backed, which is based on, uh, I mean, the, the only 
we, we've been self-funded since 2006, and maybe that's not the best thing, but today we, we don't see cash as, a, as an important, um, it's not really limiting at this point, uh, our, our growth uh, per se. So I think our focus on that, on the cash generation, on the business model was very important for us during the very first two years. Um, going into Vodafone and sitting there knowing that we have a viable business in that uh, advertising our mobile marketing agency that we've created making sure knowing that we have uh, we have that good model allowed us to also invest and explore uh, other areas like that vast space and um, what we've done to really convince them I mean they, they see a company that's not solely based on uh, on what we're going to be offering them some a company that has some traction um, they also the concept itself was novel um, it was a, it was innovative at, at that time they and we, we presented it in a way that was really very risk free for the operator. So there was no upfront, upfront investment. Um, the risk for us to, to actually, for them to, to try us out was really minimal. And I think this was very important for us, for, for them to, uh, to try out our proposal for this uh, vast service. I see. Um, and take me into one of those failures. You know, when you talk about these crucial pivot points. Um, in your career and in TA Telecom's life, um, what was a failure that you conquered that allowed you to become more successful? Well, we we had one uh, one we, we we were able to afford a big failure. Actually, we we uh, we did a partnership with uh, with Shazam back in in the UK back in I think it was back in 2006 or 2007 and uh, we really invested a lot in getting the exclusive license for the use of Shazam which is really the music recognition service where you can just call up an IVR number point the phone at the speakers and um, you'll be able to get receive the uh, an SMS with the name of the artist the name of the song and also a link that allows you to download the any any related content like the ringtone or the full track. So we really had uh, we really had a tough time launching the service and and educating the market. We're not able to to um, to generate enough revenue to make it a success. This this was really a very tough lesson um, in in this end. It wasn't really the the first failure that we had. We've tried different services before. Some of them would work, but this one was it was almost for a, a no brainer for us in terms of the success. We felt that this is going to be a hit, and uh, it wasn't. Um, just learning how to approach innovation was very important for us, and really helped us even during the phase that we're in today helped us get past, uh, you know, just helped us to reach a, another success. And what changed about your mindset after that happened? Do you now do more market testing? Um, do you approach specific markets? Um, how, do you see, how do you see your approach to innovation now evolving um, in the time to come as, as mobile continues to grow in Egypt and the region? Well, it kind of it helped us understand um, not to be scared of failure. Actually, um, it it really helped us to to actually pursue uh, failure in a structured manner and identifying that an er that an early failure is more important than a success. That we don't understand what the reason behind it is. We uh, we're able to really try to structure our structure our approach to uh, testing any new concept. One of the most important things really is just not take people's opinions about a service or an idea before we launch it. People have to try your service, people have to try your idea for you to get constructive feedback. It is, it is for us now, I have a, a very strong belief that it's very useless for you to ask someone for their opinion on your idea. You can do it uh, just to get general casual feedback, but definitely I, I strongly believe that um, 
if you strongly, if you believe in, in the service, you just need to really test it. And just, um, you only double, we've learned to only double down and, and give it everything we've got once we generate cash and it's a scalable, uh, service or a scalable product. This is the only time that we are going to be willing to really invest, um, both time and money. And even time is very important, um, in, in any of our new services. We actually launched uh, services or launched apps that we have, that we are launching uh, really just to test the market, not necessarily to make it um, a success. I see. And if you had to advise a young entrepreneur today about what qualities to um, cultivate in their business, what are the single biggest qualities that you think have contributed to your success? Um, is it a balance of innovation and caution? What What are the qualities that you think made TA Telecom able to be successful? Well, I think I think what what's very important is uh, is really to be very open minded and surround yourself with uh, surround surround yourself with people that are you know just as smart or even smarter than you are because. I think this made a huge difference for us um, in in really, especially in the the last few years. And really, this is where Endeavor had a very strong impact on, on our business uh, so far. Just being able to just be very attentive to what is working, being very curious and attentive to what is not working, being open to uh, criticism was very very important for us. Um, being open to the feedback that you're going to get that is that goes against what you strongly believe in. I'm not saying that uh, you don't necessarily um, have to let go of what you believe in. You just need to understand the frame that uh, the person in front of you is, is coming from. So, for example, uh, I was talking to uh, some of the some other VCs that are part of the Endeavor Network. Let's, uh, I think it's almost a year and a half ago, and they're basically saying the business that you're in, what, uh, the bus platform, and what you're working on, is is uh, is not going to exist in the coming. Uh, you know, give it one or two years, and and this this business is not going to be viable. It's not going to exist. So, it's very counterintuitive. It's 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 it goes against what we believe in. And it goes against the projections. It goes against a lot of the things that um, that uh, that all the signals that we have about the industry, but there is a certain element of truth in what this person is saying. So, just making sure that um, you're very open to feedback and you seek this feedback, even if it's uh, if it goes against what you believe in. Wonderful. Well, thank you for sharing all of your thoughts and insights with Wanda. Thank you very much. Thanks.